Hello and uh, welcome to Open Source Workplace uh, video series. Uh, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, please do hit that subscribe button and hit that like and notification bell so you receive alerts to all upcoming videos. Today, I'm very happy to have Rich Berliner back. Rich Berliner is the Chief Publishing Officer at Connected Real Estate Magazine. Uh, he's also the owner of Fifth Gen Media. Rich, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I'm doing very well, very well. Uh, I'm excited to get to talk to you today. You know, last time we talked, we, we talked about CBRS and, and sort of that frequency and how it works. And we sort of connected that with 5G. And today I'm excited to sort of uh, dive a little bit more, learn a little bit more about 5G. The perception is 5G will solve a lot of problems, but perhaps the best place to start may well be, you know, what isn't 5G? Well, um, that's a great question. Great place to start, Steve. And 5G isn't completely here yet. And that's, I think that's the important thing. So 5G is coming and the carriers, as they always have done, have has started the 5G rollout outdoors. Uh, but we talked a little bit about this last time that 80% of all phone calls and, and data, I would assume, are initiated indoors. Uh, so therefore, it's important that we start to think about uh, 5G and all these technologies as indoor technologies. And again, you know, in building and indoor uh, wireless is very near and dear to our hearts uh, here at Connected Real Estate. And so I think the important thing is that um, when real estate owners are starting to, to ask about and talk about 5G and how they get it in their buildings, um, it's complicated. And it's not just like um, it was in the old days, it's put a DAS system in, now you've got it and, and it's here. Um, 5G will be sort of a hybrid um, and how we put it into buildings um, and how we use it running over different frequencies for different carriers and different uses in different places. So mm. that's really the paradox here is, um, you know, everybody wants 5G because of the increased speeds. Um, the real killer apps aren't quite here yet. Um, we've talked about robotic surgery. We've talked about driverless cars. We've talked about all these other things that are coming, but um, we haven't really focused on uh, just the increased speed that it's going to give us and the ability to do more, and especially in a work from home environment. When do you think it will be at a point where it will be beneficial and whether it's building owners, whether it's large occupiers will actually be installing 5G technologies or relying on 5G technologies? Yeah, I think we've just seen the dawn of 5G equipment for in building starting to happen. And so the birthing of that uh, gear <clears throat> and that, excuse me, <clears throat> and that strategy and how it will roll out in buildings um, is kind of very important to the whole situation. Uh, but, but the gear is starting to be available now, um, but it is really a, um, a slice and dice of, okay, what frequency for what carrier? How do I get it? How do I put it in my building? Um, you know, sort of that's the important thing is um, if we're, looking at Verizon doing millimeter wave outdoors, um, they probably will use some other set of frequencies to run it inside your building. Um, they may not use millimeter wave or you may not want millimeter wave to be the strategy you use in your building. Um, so there are other um, frequencies that you can run that 5G network in your building over. So using CBRS with a 3.5 strategy um, could give you 5G using those frequencies and running it in a, in a way that will be very advantageous to be able to put it indoors in your building. Mm, so mm. it's a complicated situation of figuring out what's going to go where and on what frequencies and how it's going to work. And are there various locations that may be more advanced? Maybe it's countries, maybe it's cities. Is, is the technology further deployed or further, more, more uh, developed? Um, in certain jurisdictions? Well, I, I, you know, the two parts to that question. Yes, there are other places in the world that are way ahead of us in terms of rolling it out. Um, South Korea, uh, China is moving very quickly on it. But in the U.S., um, one of the interesting things is that we've done a lot of work in stadiums um, and outdoor venues. And so, you know, 5G being available in these things now with the pandemic, it's really set that back because there are no fans in those stands right now. So, mm. um, but the interesting part of it is other than making the cycle of replacement so that everyone in a stadium, that there are 80,000 people in a stadium today, 
how many of those people actually have a 5G working phone. So it's two parts that have to catch up mm. to this whole thing. It's not just um, that, you know, some carrier, T-Mobile, um, took the time and effort to um, cover a stadium with 5G. It's now uh, how many people out of those 80,000 have a 5G phone, a 5G capable phone. You know, we saw recently AT&T get slapped on the wrist a little bit um, for using uh, the 5GE moniker, which was really sped up 4G. And so that confused a lot of people because they thought they had 5G. What they really had was, you know, sped up 4G. So, you know, companies, there, there are no rules and regulations. I guess there are rules and regulations coming, but there haven't been rules and regulations about what you could say and what you couldn't say about um, your, your 5G network. And now I think that it's coming into focus that um, unless you've got what's called the, the um, technology called 5G new radio or NR, um, you really didn't have 5G. Uh, so uh, I think it's, it's an interesting um, uh, mashup of all the different things that have to go into it. Guy, uh, uh, the, thank God the people that are working on this are guys a lot smarter than I am and how to figure out how this will all work. But it seems like they're really competent folks uh, pushing towards uh, getting us 5G, um, which in my world, and maybe this isn't you know, the, the, the general thinking, but in my world, it's going to be simply faster wireless. And as we think about, you know, the COVID-19 and the impact that may have on buildings and large occupiers, right? They're probably likely to deploy new types of technologies. Right? We've seen things and heard things about, you know, facial recognition and other sensors around the building to help people manage their space better. Will 5G help the collection of data? Absolutely. And um, that's really where it's going to shine is the ability for uh, 5G to collect data on all your sensors, on <clears throat> you know, information from your intelligent glass, from um, you know the the uh, thermal sensors checking temperatures in the lobby. It'll give you a greater, faster pipe to get all that information, and that's really where people are looking at it from a, a technology standpoint in their building, uh, and how they can, if even if they don't have it today, how they can plan on. Um, their, all their other aspects of their building, like sensors, like, um, you know, the thermal imaging and, and telling people how many folks are on a floor in a conference room and all that. Um, those are things that are going to be much more effective when you have 5G, which is going to give you greater speed and sort of more, more capacity. Um, so those will all fit into it. And again, that's a challenge for you know, the, the CIO, that's a challenge for the IT people, that's a challenge for, um, you know, the smart guys inside these real estate companies to figure out what's really important to them, what they need to gather, how they're going to organize it, and how they're going to store it. So that's, that's where 5G, I think, really will shine. It will be a great technology. Um, and I think we're talking, you know, uh, you know it's, we're at the dawn of it right now. I think we're talking two years, three years before we'll see you know, a real robust rollout. But I think if you look back in the way 4G came on, um, it gave us all more data opportunity, it gave us more speed over the previous um, iterations. And then what happened is we came up with Uber and Lyft because those weren't things we thought about and said, hey, let's get a faster technology and we can use these things or we can create these. Let's, um, we, we, the system was created and then people, who went out and looked at it and said, you know, I could do all these things now that I have this technology. So that's, I think, the way 5G will roll out. I was reading something yesterday about all the things that 5G will be able to do. And that's kind of always in my head is um, 5G will do this, 5G will do that. Um, it's still, people are talking about it in a future sense in many ways, but all the preparation that our constituents need to do both on the real estate side and on the wireless side need to be happening now. That planning is very worthwhile to happen now. That's great. And there's great context about how evolution of technologies actually allows organizations to develop and new technologies and other um, businesses to form. So as we sit here today, Rich, you know, and we look out 12 months from now, is there certain things that excite you, be it technology, emerging companies? Is there things that excite you? Yeah, that's a good question, Stephen. The answer is 
Um, yes, and I think it's uh, medicine, the medical implications of all this, even the medical slash uh, commercial real estate um, uh, aspects to this. Uh, so um, I went to the doctor yesterday for my yearly checkup and it was a live, um, you know, face-to-face uh, -face situation. But I mean, they're doing telemedicine now um, and, you know, again, Zoom for a, to, to talk to your doctor and go back and forth um, is fine for today. But um, the telemedicine of the future will be uh, my doctor taking my blood pressure um, uh, virtually, if you will. He'll be looking and, and being able to check on things. You know, doctor, there's this thing growing on my, on my shoulder. Let's take a look at it. Um, do you think that's something that needs to be removed? Um, telemedicine in hospitals, um, and, and I would say not telemedicine only, but uh, medical technology uh, is really advancing in terms of even COVID patients who are brought into hospitals. And we have a staff writer who has a very strong background in wireless and medical was telling us that in one of the hospitals he was familiar with, you walked into the hospital, when they checked you in, they gave you an iPad and that's how you dealt with the staff because you couldn't just ring for the nurse. You couldn't just call for the, the, the uh, doctor to come in and see you. You needed to have this, this communications uh, lead in and you know, 5G will play into that massively. I think the future um, and I need to be like uh, CNBC now, uh, you know, I own a little bit of Apple stock, but I think the future will be, um, you know, the Apple watch will uh, take your blood pressure. It will know your sugar level. It will have all kinds of uh, data on you and it will be uh, given through a sort of a telemetry system back to the medical professionals. And uh, one of the companies that we're very close with Tavistock Realty in Florida um, has a, uh, a planned community and they gather data voluntarily from their, um, their, uh, the folks that live and work in the community. And they get an enormous amount of benefit from knowing the health of the people that live and work there. So, um, you know, Tavistock is one of the companies I look to as a, uh, a major thought leader in this. And uh, they constantly talk about things with us like uh, UV lighting to disinfect office spaces and kitchens and bathrooms. Um, you know, um, uh, intelligent glass where every pane has an IP address. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are lots and lots of things like that coming um, that we haven't thought of that will be so much better for us when 5G really is here and fully implemented. No, it's great context and it's great examples of uh, things that we can look forward to. But you also touched on a really important point to sort of finish with whenever you talk about data, right? And the fact that in a Tavistock community, because the individuals are receiving a, a feedback and a benefit, they're quite prepared to give information and share information. And I think society, as we look to like so Uber, right? We'll let Uber know exactly where we are. So the moment we need them, they know exactly where it is. And I think as we navigate through through COVID and everything else we've got to get through over the next number of months. I think that's sort of a trust thing that's got to be developed, but uh, it's a really important point you, you, you make there, right? So look, thank you for your time as always. Um, thank you for the education and everything you shared, everything you do at Connected Real Estate Magazine. Really, thank you for having me, Steve. And again, what I think you're doing with open source workplace is terrific. And uh, I read it all the time and I thank you for doing that. I appreciate your kind words. Thank you, man. Have a good day. Cheers.